Hello and welcome to a Vector Tuts Quick Tip Screencast. My name is Cheryl Graham and in this video we'll take a look at the export functions that are found under the file menu. You can export your Illustrator files to a variety of file formats that can then be used in other applications or for other uses. There are a lot of choices under the format menu as you can see, but for the sake of brevity in this video I'm just going to go with three of the most common formats, PNG, JPEG, and PSD or Photoshop. So let's start with PNG. This stands for Portable Network Graphic, so I'll go ahead and choose that and then click the Export button. Here I get a choice of resolution, screen resolution, medium or high, and then I can choose what kind of anti-aliasing I want. There is a type optimized setting, and while I do have one line of type in this illustration, I don't want to use that because that's just a minor part of the overall artwork. So I'm going to choose Art Optimized for my anti-aliasing method. You get a small preview of the PNG, and you can choose to have a transparent background, or a white background, or a black one, or you can even choose any other color from the color picker. So I'll choose this brown, for example, and you can see how that's going to look. Not so great. So I'm going to go back and choose white as my background color, and then click OK. It'll take a second to write the PNG file, and here it is opened in Photoshop at 100% magnification, and you can see that that's a nice, clean, sharp file in the PNG format. Next I'm going to use the JPEG format. This is the most commonly used file format on the web, but keep in mind that when creating a JPEG from Illustrator to use on the web, you'll want to use the Save for Web feature. That's because Save for Web will optimize the JPEG to create the smallest yet best looking image possible. When you want a high quality JPEG that you might use for printing, for example, or for some kind of slideshow or projection, that's when you'll want to export it rather than using Save for Web. So here I have a document that contains three banners on three different artboards. You can see the artboards here in the Artboards panel. I'll go back up to File Export, and this time choose JPEG, and I'll click the Use Artboards button. I can choose to export all of the artboards, or if I just want to export one or two, I can choose a range over here on the right. In the options, I can choose the color model, RGB, CMY, or grayscale, and I can set the quality. You can use these presets in the drop-down menu, or you can use the sliders. And I'm going to turn it all the way up to 10. I'm going to use a standard compression method, and then just for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to use screen resolution, but of course I could use a higher resolution than that. Again, I have a choice whether to anti-alias the image and what kind to use, and I'm going to choose Art Optimized. I'll click OK, and now when I go to the Finder, I can see the three JPEGs there. They're named using the title of the document, and then numbered according to the artboard. Just a quick word about anti-aliasing. Here are two JPEGs I created at 300 ppi. The one on the left has no anti-aliasing applied, and you can see that it's kind of jaggy and this shows up especially in curved shapes, where the one on the right that has the anti-aliasing applied is smooth. So most of the time, you're going to want to use anti-aliasing, just to avoid the jaggies on those curves. Lastly, we'll do the Photoshop format. I'll go back up to File Export, and choose Photoshop or PSD. When I click Export, I get the options, and the first is the color model. Now this illustration is in CMYK, so I'm going to leave the exported file in CMYK. I could also choose RGB or grayscale. Usually when you're exporting to Photoshop, you're going to work on the illustration some more, so you probably want to choose a higher resolution. I'll just choose the medium one for the sake of demonstration. Under Options, I can choose whether to write the layers that already exist in my Illustrator file, or flatten it. Now here's something important to note. If I'm moving from one color space to the next, for example if I'm trying to export this as RGB, I don't have the option to write those layers. You can see that it's grayed out. My Illustrator document is in CMYK, but I can't export the layers to RGB. I can, however, export them to grayscale. But I'm just going to go back to CMYK. I can also choose to preserve text editability, so I have this one line of live type in my Illustrator document, so I'm going to leave that checked. I'll check maximum editability as well, and Illustrator will write each vector object or group to a separate layer in Photoshop, and you'll see what that looks like in a second. Under the Anti-Aliasing drop-down menu, I can choose Type Optimized, or Art Optimized, and since I just have that one line of type, 
I'm going to choose Art Optimized. I can also choose to embed the color profile. In this case, it's the US web coded swap, which is a standard in printing. And now I'll click Export. When I open that file up in Photoshop, you can see it's on a transparent background and my layers are preserved. So I can turn these layers on or off and edit them as I wish. So you might want to export an Illustrator file to Photoshop because you want to add some effects or make it part of a larger Photoshop painting. Under the color layer, you can see that the individual objects in the Illustrator file have been put on their own layers in the Photoshop document. And you can see that the text is still live when it comes into Photoshop, so I can take my Type tool and edit that if I need to. So I hope you have a better understanding of when you would want to choose Export rather than Save As or Save for Web, and that you'll experiment with some of the different file formats on your own.